G'day Dirty Mudders. I have been keen to do this rig rundown video for you guys for such a long time. I just had to wait for this to come back from Ford from getting a new engine. But that's on one of the other videos you'll have to check out of why it got a new engine. But I gotta say, I love these V6 turbo diesel Ford Rangers. So I'm gonna give you a rundown from the front bar to the tow bar at the back. So let's start right up here. So as you can see, there's a few things up the front here, but I'm gonna start with the bar work. This bar is a jungle four x four bar. Now they're reasonably new bar to the market, but I really like the shape of them. They're fully tested and ADR compliant, which is not like some of the other bull bars on the market. I reckon it looks pretty sexy, full hoop bar, like it gives it that country feel. You know, if you hit some roos and stuff like that, you feel like you're a little bit more protected. Tough as nails, I like the bar. If you do too, check out where you can get a jungle bar from your local stockist. All right, we now move to the light bar. Now, this is a Nava light bar, and I've got to tell you, I'm a hardcore fan, like I'm a hardcore lighting fan and all that sort of stuff. I've used light force, I've used like all types, steady lights, you name it, I've had them on there. I'm pretty impressed with this Nava actual light bar though. It's actually a, not a bright, bright white light bar where it blinds you in your eyes. It's actually a bit more softer light. So the reflection from signs and all that sort of stuff isn't quite as bad. I quite like it, um, but it might not be everybody's cup of tea. I just thought maybe another couple of little spotlights in here would complete the whole thing up the front. But that's something you guys can comment on on this video and see if I'm on the right track with that, if you'd like to see two new spotlights in there. Dobbo's winch, you've seen on my other videos, it's a core product that I put on 99% of my vehicles. You wanna be able to recover yourself. And the reason why I keep on sticking with Dobinson's winches is that I haven't had one fail or let me down. I mean, they have skull dragged big chop Land Cruiser 200s, my old glory to the top of like the steepest hills and whatever else with a single line pull, let alone a double line where it just halves the effort that it has to do. So I'm super, super impressed with the Dobbo's 4x4 um, winches. So check out who stocks that stuff near you if you like those ones as well. I highly recommend them. There's not much else to talk about up the front. Probably should step back around the side. That's all jungle uh, bar work as well. So we've got the side steps and the rails. They're pretty sexy. Come and look. Here's the sexy side rails, all right? And the side steps. Pretty sturdy. So that's what I like about them. You know, it's very functional for me. I'm not taking this thing off road and sliding it over rocks and all that sort of jazz. They're not rock sliders, they're really good side steps. And if you do run into an animal when you're um, touring out west, that whole sidebar and these steps will push them away from the vehicle and hopefully protect the side a little bit. Moving on to the clear view mirrors. Now, as you know, when you are tripping around with any sort of caravan camper and you can't see behind it, it's a must to get a really good set of towing mirrors. Now, I like clear views. I've had lots of other different brands over the time, but I'll tell you what, these are tough as nails. You can do these with them, they can take hits, they do whatever. They're just a really, really good product. I have been running clear views on my stuff for a very long time. We put them on a lot of our builds for people who are uh, traveling around Australia. So guys, if you like the clear view mirrors and these little ones here, they're the small ones, so they don't have the split in the screen, which each to their own of the little split screen, you can sort of position that down and look behind you, but I like the one big mirror because it doesn't play with my eyes. Anyway, let's move on to the wheels and tires. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, folks? How sexy does that wheel look? Now, I absolutely love these Icon wheels. These ones here have got the bead lock option, which is the fully legal one. So these screws here that I'm pointing to screw in behind the bead, okay? And it doesn't actually clamp the bead there, but it will prevent these from knocking off the tire when you've uh, got them at low pressures. For me, I love that idea. Absolutely trick, because I do not like rolling tires off the bead. Now, these are Cooper Discovery Rugged Trek tires. They are sort of a hybrid tire between an all-terrain and a mud train. You get the best of both worlds. You get a whole heap of, you know, clearance between the lugs, so it's great for self-cleaning, you know, in the sloppy stuff, but it's also quiet on the road, and that's a must 
for like when you're doing big long trips touring, you don't want to have the tyres woo, 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 down the road. So I'm very, very impressed with these uh, Cooper uh, Rugged Trek. You know, I run Mickey Thompson's, I've run BF Goodrich and all the rest of the stuff. But I reckon after taking this to the Territory and uh, running these, you know, on that big long distance across the dirt roads with the tyres down, like with the pressures down and all that sort of jazz, to see how they've performed, no chips, nothing out of it, you know, driving on the plenty highway for miles and miles and miles, I'm super impressed. So I reckon that's a great combo, the Icon wheel and the Cooper tyres. And we've also got the DMW deflators. Now, they get fitted when you um, fit your tyres to the rim and you unscrew them and you can deflate the tyre really, really quickly. Saves mucking around with one of those gauges that, um, that you screw on, undo the valve out, wait for it to come down. So it's simple as you just undo the lid, you uh, undo the cap, you pop that up until you hear it, no, it's really pouring out with air, you stop it, you just have a little gauge, you go, oh, yep, it's at uh, pressure or it needs a little bit more. It's really, really simple. They're on our website, so check them out. If you like them, grab a set. So guys, I reckon we go and have a look at the XTR tray and uh, locker box set up on the back. Hey, Dirty Mudders, have a crack at this. These Jeep Gladiator Rubicons are just next level cool. Removable roof panels. Does your car have that? I bet you it doesn't. I tell you, if you want to have one of these, it is so easy. Jump on the link below and enter, and you could win this exact car, but built like that one. <laughs> This setup might not be everybody's cup of tea, and you might be thinking, why didn't you just go a full canopy or no canopy at all, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I really love the functionality of the half enclosed locker box and the half open dog box, okay? Because I'm a pet lover. We've got four dogs between our family, one for each of us. They all fit in that side of the dog box. And in this side, we can fit heaps and heaps of our luggage or groceries or whatever. Like that is really, really huge. You would fit way more in there than you expect. So if I'm going grocery shopping on the way home from work or whatever, they're not floating around the back of your ute or your big open canopy or anything like that. They're there enclosed in a safe spot, not on your back seat or in the tray. So that there is, is my go-to setup. You've got a bit of space, you can put a motorbike, Okay, on the back here, you can put fuel drums. You, I put my fridges there and fuel drums and everything you've seen on my touring um, trips. Just a whole heap of stuff that you just don't want. Like to me, I don't want an enclosed canopy. Like there's nothing worse than diesel spilling in your canopy. You know, <laughs> there's nothing worse of, you know, broken CVs or whatever that, you, that you're tripping around with. At least you've got a bit of space on the back of your car. You can go to the tip or the dump, whatever you call it. It's just really functional, in my opinion. I mean, we've got power coming out the back of the locker box here that I run into a two-way port that uh, supplies to two fridges, you know. So you've got the best of both worlds having this setup. You know, you've got good toolboxes here, okay, with heaps of room in them. I've got the caravan hitch on there, and I always take with me my normal tow hitch as well, so you never know what happens. You never know when you've got to hook onto a trailer or something like that. So plenty of space in there. Obviously, we've got our signature trundle drawer that's fully sealed that we have on all our trays, whether it's a premium, an XT or the XTR. They're practically the same drawer with a different face plate. They're so proven. I've swamped them heaps of times. They very rarely leak. They're absolutely exceptional. And what I really like is that it can be used as a table. So if you have your fridges on the back of your ute here, you can pull your drawer out you know, you've got tools in it or whatever, you can still put your Barbie on the back or, you know, use it as a workbench or whatever. So come around, I'll show you how the drawer works. So for the folks out there that haven't seen our trundle drawers on our trays, here it is. Right, you've got a big flat surface there to do whatever you want. It takes a hell of a lot of weight. We've got our own design roller system, which are nylon rollers, okay? And it's, they run in this section here. So see how that's flat? If you're on rocky, dusty, crappy roads, you always get rocks and gunk that flick up, okay? And in, you've got to have a sealed section drawer that, you know, has around the faceplate here and all that sort of jazz. 
A lot of the problems with those, they do leak from time to time. It's very hard to get that to seal properly where this is a bit easier to get to seal. You've got gravity helping you. You don't have the movement of the vehicle going backwards and forwards. And that's what people say to me all the time, Ruben, why did you seal your drawers this way? I say, well, you know, gravity helps, but we don't have the inertia of the car going forwards and backwards, trying putting pressure on whatever you clipped here to keep it in against that seal on the drawer face. So we just wanted to be a little bit different and a little bit more functionality. You do lose a bit of space this way and a bit of space that way with the way we do it, but you don't have any issues. So the rocks just flick out of there. You know, you've got barely any sideways movement. If you have one of those rollers, which we've never had one fail yet, but if you do, they're really easy to change. Just unbolt it, whack a new one in, happy days. So guys, in here, that's your sealed area. So that can be full of tools, you know, whatever you want in there. It's just a really, really functional spot. And you don't even know you've got a drawer in the back. It looks super, super cool. So while I've got you at the back of the car here, we have the tag tow bar. Now you're wondering, you're saying, Ruben, but the XLT Ranger comes with a tow bar. And you go, yeah, it does. It suits the tub. And the problem is with that, they hang down here and you've got a big massive gap you've got makes them worse for departure angle but to me i don't like the look of it so i've got a tag tow bar it tucks it up nice and high and uh, with that we've got a nice little mounting plate on here which our accessories go on so we've got our airbag mount uh, where we pump up the airbags here we've got a red Anderson and a Gray Anderson, and we've got our genuine Ford multi-pin plug, okay, that you can have your seven pin flat, and then you can have your caravan plug as well. I've got the caravan hitch on the back here at the moment, as you can see. Something that I do want to touch on though as well, we've got full Dobinson's IMS suspension through here, so not the remote res. So we've got the coils up the front, and obviously the leaf in the back, being a normal Ford Ranger, but I've opted for IMS shocks this time, which is non-remote res. So they're a fully sealed shock that are already valved, you know, specifically for the terrain of Australia. I didn't want to be mucking around with the remote res shocks on this particular vehicle. I just wanted to get in it and just drive. And I tell you, I am not disappointed. As I've said, I've driven this on a lot of dirt roads with a lot of corrugations, towing, not towing and those shocks soak up all the bumps, unbelievable. So if you're in the market for some suspension, check out the Dobbo's um, OMS uh, shocks that are out there, and obviously their springs are renowned for being probably nearly the best in the business anyway. Australian made products, that what else could you ask for? Come around and have a look at the dog box. As I said before, I run this side for my dogs. So we have the pattern cut in the door, so they've got plenty of airflow, and they don't get a whole heap of wind through the side here and a whole heap of like rain or whatever else on the outside. There's heaps and heaps of airflow here. So we don't need to cut the pattern in the sides. It's the same size as the locker box on the other side. So heaps and heaps of room. Uh, while we're on this side, here is the water filler. Now, a 40 litre tank in these XTR trays all come as standard. We have a pump on them, all the rest of the jazz. So uh, you've got pressure out the back to wash your hands, you know, fill up your caravan, water tank, whatever. And another thing you're probably thinking is, that's all cool, Ruben, you've got a bit of a ute tray on the back, but I don't see any tie rails. And you go, that's correct, because, come have a look at this. We have aeroplane track in the back. So it's called cargo, cargo track, aeroplane track, whatever. They run them in big jumbo jets and all that sort of jazz to tie down all the stuff they're carrying in the plane. So I want to do uh, put that in a tray because I think it's so functional. So these things just clip out, easy as that, and you can put them anywhere you want along the tray. And you can uh, tie in whatever you like, ropes, ratchet straps, the works and jerks. And uh, obviously on this one here, I've got the tray sides to keep whatever I got in the back there from rolling around. You're probably wondering what we've done to the interior. We've done nothing. <laughs> I've just put a UHF in the vehicle. 
You know, there's so many brands of UHFs out there. Take your pick, they all talk to each other. That's a must for me for traveling, talking to the people you're traveling with and all that sort of jazz. So that's the only thing I've done to the inside of the car is uh, put that on. Guys, if I've missed anything you think, please comment below, ask the questions. I'll do a catch up video on anything else you wanna see. But uh, the crux of it is it's a pretty simple build. I hope I've answered your questions, but like I said, if I've missed anything, just shout out and I'll answer on the next video. I appreciate uh, all the support out there, folks, and I'll catch you on the next video. Well, I hope you liked that video. Make sure you hit subscribe or you're gonna get bogged.